Dear students, now we are going to discuss convolution integral and its properties in detail. Let's start with the definition of convolution integral. Here we are going to consider LTA continuous time system. In most of the real time applications, we are using continuous time system. LTI represents linear time invariant system. The response of the system for in any arbitrary input is obtained by convolving the input signal with impulse response of the system. So in general, we can mention the convolution is nothing but the mathematical way of combining two signals to produce a new signal. So this is the diagrammatic representation of convolution. So this is the LTI system with the impulse response H of T. The impulse response of the system represents the behavior of the system. The input signal is X of T, the output signal is Y of T. So Y of T is nothing but the convolution of input signal and the impulse response of the system. Since we are talking about continuous time system, the convolution is mentioned as convolution integral. It is defined as y of t is equal to x of t convolved with h of t, where the symbol represents the convolution operation. The mathematical expression for this convolution integral is y of t is equal to integration from minus infinity to plus infinity x of dou h of t minus dou d dou. So here dou represents the time variant of the convolving signal. So this is the formula of convolution integral. So there are five steps involved in this convolution integral operation. Okay. So actually the given signals are in time t. Correct. But in the formula we have changed the time t to dou. So that is the very first step. So that is what? Change of time index. That is the first step involved in this convolution integral operation. Time t is changed to dou. The next step. So in this signal h of t minus dou. So in this case the second operation is folding the signal. So h of dou is folded into h of minus dou. After folding the signal, we have to shift the signal. So that is what H of T minus dou. That is the third step. Fourth step, we have to multiply X of dou with H of T minus dou. And fifth step is integrate the multiplication of X of dou and H of T minus dou. So there are around five steps as a day. That's what given here steps in convolution integral. The first step is change of time index. The time index is changed to dou for x of t and h of t. Next folding. h of dou is folded to get h of minus dou. Then shifting the h of minus dou to h of t minus dou. After that we have to multiply x of dou with h of t minus dou and then we have to integrate and take the limits from minus infinity to plus infinity. Convolution integral has some important properties. Commutative property, associative property, distributive property, shift property, width property, convolution with an impulse signal, convolution with unit step signal. These all are the important properties of convolution integral. Let us see one by one. Commutative property. It is given as x1 of t convolution with x2 of t is equal to x2 of t convolution with x1 of t. Changing the order of the signal does not affect the operation. Okay, we are getting the same result. Okay, even though changing the order of the signal. Here x1 of t, x2 of t. Here it is x2 of t convolved with x1 of t. So, but for both the cases we are getting the same answer. So here it is, it is the proof for this. Take the left hand side first. X1 of t convolution with X2 of t. 
that is equal to the formula for this convolution integral is integration of x1 of dou x2 of t minus dou into d dou. So in the next step, we are going to consider this t minus dou is equal to p. So let's assume t minus dou is equal to p. p is also the time variant. Okay. So for further simplification, we have to consider like that. So from this we can write dou is equal to what now? t minus p. And we have to integrate both the sides. We can get minus d dou is equal to dp. So from this we can write tb is equal to minus tau or d tau is equal to minus tp. Both are same. We are going to substitute these values in the above expression. Okay. So then we can get this t minus dou. Okay. This t minus dou becomes p. And this dou becomes t minus p. Correct. Dou is equal to what? t minus p. So we can write and d tau is replaced with minus t p. So we can take this minus and here the limit from infinity to minus infinity. Here tau is the time variant that is uh, we are going to integrate with respect to tau right. So the limits from minus infinity to plus infinity. So here it is p. So we are going to change this minus tau with respect to this p then limits are also getting changed. Okay. So then we can get minus of because this is d tau is replaced with minus dp. We can take this minus outside. So integration of infinity to minus infinity. Here this x2 of p. t minus tau becomes p right. So x2 of p x1 of this x1 of tau becomes x1 of t minus p into dp. Okay. If you want to change the limit. Okay. From the lower order to up higher order. We have to introduce one more minus sign. So here already one minus is there. We are going to change the limits from minus infinity to plus infinity means one more sign minus is introduced here. So minus into minus plus. So plus integration from minus infinity to plus infinity x2 of p x1 of t minus p tp it is in the form of convolution integral expression. So we can simplify this expression as x2 of t convolved with x1 of t. So this is nothing but right hand side. So left hand side is equal to right hand side. In the same way we can prove that the associative property also. Here in this associative property in the first step in the left hand side we can convolve the first two signals x1 of t convolved with x2 of d. The result of this two is again convolved with x3 of t. That is equal to x1 of t convolved with x2 of t convolution with x3 of t. Next one is distributive property. So here distributive property is given as x1 of t convolved with x2 of t plus x3 of t. That is equal to x1 of t convolution with x2 of t plus x1 of t convolution with x3 of t. So we have to convolute the signals x2 of t and x3 of t separately and add the results. That is what the distributive property. So let's take the left hand side for its proof. So what is the left hand side? x1 of t convolution with x2 of t plus x3 of t, right? So that is what the left hand side. For further simplification, we have to assume that x3, x2 of t plus x3 of t is nothing but y of t. Consider like that, okay? So here x1 of t convolution with y of t. The formula for this convolution is integration from minus infinity to plus infinity x1 of dou y of t minus dou into d tau. So in the next step we have to replace this y of t minus dou with its actual value. So what is the actual expression for y of t? It is x2 of t plus x3 of t. So instead of t here we are having so y of t minus tau. So here also we can write x2 of t minus tau plus x3 of then y of t minus tau is replaced as x2 of t minus tau plus x3 of t minus tau. So in the next step we have to multiply this x1 of tau inside this. 
So here integration x1 of dou and d tau is common for this two. So we can get the value like this integration of x1 of dou x2 of t minus dou into d tau plus integration of x1 of dou x3 of t minus dou d tau. So this is in the form of convolution between x1 of t and x2 of t. So we can write this expression as x1 of t convolution with x2 of t. So this is also in the form of convolution between x1 of t and x3 of t. It is t. Okay. So finally we have obtained the right hand side. So we have proved that property. So the next property is shift property. Okay. So if x1 of t convolution with x2 of t is equal to y of t. Then x1 of t convolution with x2 of t minus capital T. Here this capital T represents the time delay. Okay. So we are shifting this x2 of t with the time delay t. Capital T. That is equal to y of t minus capital T. Okay. So this is the shift property. We are going to prove this also. So here take the left hand side here. x1 of t convolution with x2 of t. That is equal to x1 of tau x2 of t minus tau into d tau. So if I am going to shift the signal, if I am going to shift the second signal with the delay capital T, then the same will be reflected in our formula also. So we can get integration of x1 of tau x2 of t minus capital T minus tau into d tau. So here instead of t we are having t minus t. So we can get the output as y of t minus capital T. So left hand side is equal to right hand side. If you are going to shift the signal that will be reflected in the output also in convolution integral. Similarly x1 of t minus capital T. If you are going to shift the first signal that will also be reflected in our output. If I am going to shift both the signals with the delay t1 and t2 what will happen means both the delays can be added in the output side. So x1 of t minus t1 convolution with x2 of t minus t2 is equal to y of t minus capital T1 minus capital T2. This is called shift property of the convolution integral. So next one is with the property. The duration of x1 of t that is the time period okay. The duration of the first signal is T1. The duration of the second signal is T2. If I am going to convert these two signals means finally the duration of the output signal is the addition of these two delays. Okay. This is the duration of the first signal. This is the duration of the second signal. After convolving these two signals the duration of the output signal is nothing but the sum of these two duration. So this is called with the property. Next one is convolution with an impulse signal. So here convolution of any signal with the unit impulse signal is equal to the signal itself that is given as x of t convolved with del of t. Del of t is nothing but what? Impulse signal. So what is impulse signal? As you all know that impulse signal is nothing but it has value only 1 at time t is equal to 0. Okay, if time t is not equal to 0, it, its value becomes 0. That is called impulse signal. Okay, so x of t convolved with impulse signal del of t is equal to x of t itself. Okay, so proof for this property here. So x of t convolved with del of t is equal to the formula is integration of x of tau del of t minus tau d tau. As you all know that del of value becomes 1 when the time period given is 0. So here the time period is what? t minus tau. When this becomes 0? Whenever the time is equal to tau. Both are uh, tau is equal to t. Okay, we can consider like that. So whenever tau is equal to t then both get cancel each other we can get dou of 0. So dou of 0 is equal to 1. Okay. So otherwise its value is 0. So whenever we are going to take a convolution with respect to impulse signal 
there is only one value at the particular time there is no other values right so here this x of t convolved with del of t is equal to integration for this time t is equal to dou x of dou del of t minus dou d tau so for this only one very we are not going to integrate correct so integration for a particular time range correct lower limit and upper limit is mandatory for this but here we are having only one time period at that time alone we are having the signal for this impulse so t is equal to tau means next step we have to simply substitute that value here okay so we are not going to integrate we are going to simply substitute this value so tau can be replaced with the value of t so tau becomes t so here this signal is x of t so this one is del of t minus t so what will happen del of 0 so del of 0 is equal to 1 it's always 1 so x of t into 1 is nothing but x of t so the property is proved so what is the property convolution of any signal with a unit impulse signal is always equal to the signal itself so next one is convolution with shifted impulse signal so x of t convolution with del of t minus t naught is equal to x of t minus t naught proof for this let's take the left hand side x of t convolved with del of t minus t naught is equal to integration of x of dou del of already t minus t naught is there minus dou into d tau as we know that the impulse signal has its value 1 only at time is equal to 0. Del of 0 alone, it's having the value 1. So here take this del of t minus dou minus t naught is equal to 1 whenever the dou is equal to t minus t naught. So whenever the dou is equal to t minus t naught, then only we can get t minus t naught is already there, right? So t minus t naught, dou becomes t minus t naught so minus t minus t naught we can get minus t plus t naught all the values are cancelled we can get del of 0 so del of 0 alone is equal to 1 okay so that's why we can change the dou as t minus t naught so in the next step we can get x of this dou is replaced with t minus t naught and this del of value becomes del of 0 del of 0 value is always 1 so we can get the answer as x of t minus t naught. The next one is convolution with unit step signal. So here x of t convolved with the unit step signal u of t is equal to integration from minus infinity to plus t x of dou into d tau. So this is the convolution of any signal with the step signal. So take the left hand side x of t convolved with u of t is equal to integration of x of dou u of t minus dou into d tau. Okay. So as we know that what is the value of u of t. So u of t is equal to 1 whenever the time is greater than or equal to 0. Its value becomes 0 whenever time is less than 0. So this is the general unit step signals statement but here we are considering the dou okay so u of dou but here it is minus dou so u of minus dou means what's the value here its value should be 1 whenever t is less than 0 its value becomes 0 whenever t is greater than or equal to 0 so whenever this value becomes less than 0 so here we have to consider dou is always less than t Okay, dou is less than t means what? If it is less than t, then it will become 1. So, we can say u of t minus dou is equal to 1 whenever dou is less than t. 0 when dou is greater than t. So, we can get the limit as minus infinity to t x of dou into d tau.